Hi students, in this video I'm talking about the rise and the emergence of Christianity in the history of Western civilization. Uh, and the origins of Christianity lie in the religion of Judaism that emerges among the Jewish people in the Middle East during the period of the ancient world. And the Jews are going to establish a kingdom for themselves in modern day Palestine, uh, which is then conquered by Alexander the Great and later conquered by the Romans. The Jews distinguish themselves from the other peoples of Palestine in that they practice an exclusive monotheism, exclusive worship of only one God. And uh, they're not supposed to participate in the religious practices of any of the other peoples around them. In the time of the Roman occupation and the Roman control of Palestine and the Kingdom of Judea, uh, we have the emergence of the teacher Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Jesus of Nazareth presents himself in much the same way as many other holy men uh, in Jewish society at the time, but there are a couple of ways in which he distinguishes himself. The first is the authority he claims to hold. He claims to have, hold a greater authority than any of these previous prophets and holy men. He even claims to be the son of God. At the same time, his teachings are also a little different. He teaches that it is better to be disadvantaged in the present life in order, or often if that means, uh, you can access a totally happy, everlasting life after death. This was something that was new at the time. If we look at Jewish writings prior to Jesus, there's certainly not a uh, a 100% confidence that there's an afterlife, or even that that afterlife could be pleasant. So these are some of the ways in which Jesus is distinguishing his teachings uh, from Judaism. The popularity of Jesus means that the local Jewish religious leaders become jealous. They turn him over to the Roman governor, accusing him of committing sedition against the Roman Empire, and he is executed. His followers, however, claimed that his execution was, in fact, the sacrifice, uh, the perfect sacrifice made to God, um, so that um, if other human beings believed in his teachings, believed in this sacrifice, their sins, their misdeeds could be forgiven, and they could enter into this eternally happy afterlife. And so these teachings start to spread uh, in the years after the death of Jesus. And this is where Christianity gains a huge advantage from the processes of Hellenism and the Pax Romana that we've been looking at in previous weeks. They're able to take advantage of the fact that there is a common culture in the Mediterranean at this time, uh, a common culture of uh, Greek language and Greek terminology, Greek philosophy, that the first Christians are able to use to preach and explain this new religion. There's also this period of Roman peace called the Pax Romana, the stability provided by the Roman Empire. This enables the first preachers of Christianity to travel throughout the Roman Empire, preaching and spreading this new religion. And what's interesting is that they don't just preach this new religion to Jewish populations. Now, there were Jewish populations scattered throughout the Mediterranean. That's the primary reason why early Christian preachers start to travel. But pretty soon afterwards, within a few years of the death of Jesus, they start to extend this religion not only and preach not only to Jews, but to anyone who's willing to adopt these teachings. This is something that's unique about Christianity in the history of Western civilization at the time, that this was a universal religion. This was a religion that uh, claimed um, to be open to anyone. Um, it didn't matter your biological background. It didn't matter uh, your political position. Uh, you could uh, enter into this religion. And so that uh, explains one of the ways in which Christianity is distinct uh, from the other religions at the time, partly explains why Christianity grows uh, and spreads. Although the growth is not rapid, it's consistent uh, and continuous. And this growth is overseen by the bishops of the church. Now, the bishops claim to be the successors of the closest followers of Jesus, the Twelve Apostles.
And so there's some uncertainty as to how you should follow the teachings of Jesus, how you know that you're following the teachings of Jesus. The answer is, the answer that the early church gives is that you should ask those who were closest to him when he was alive uh, what his teachings uh, were or to clarify certain aspects of the teachings of Jesus. And when these uh, closest followers of Jesus, the apostles, die, you should ask those who are closest to them. And so this is the way in which the authority of uh, Jesus is conferred to first to the apostles and then to their successors who take up the title of bishop. And so what's, what are some of the activities of these very early bishops of the church? One, they oversee evangelization and preaching. Uh, two, they define the scriptures, which books of the Bible are to be considered inspired by God um, and legitimate biblical books and which are not. They define the liturgies of the church, the ways in which Christians should pray in common. And lastly, they condemn as heretics those who are claiming to be preaching the teachings of Jesus, but in the eyes of the bishops are doing so in error. And so the, this is the role that's played by the bishops in supervising the spread of Christianity in the Roman world.